The Obsessed Music Packaging Dude is back, 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 back again. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jorge and this is a craft drawing training. Today I'm back in the music packaging world, this time with cassette tapes. I know that cassettes are somewhat dated and they are not as popular as CDs or DVDs, vinyl, Blu-rays. However, they have had a revival lately. And you know me, I love to have custom copies of my favorite music in physical form. I'll show you how to design, print, and put together your very own cassette in a jewel case like this. Included printed labels. And next week, I'll show you how to make a sleep case like this one. They're really easy and fun to make, and they look really good in your collection as a novelty item. Or you can go back memory lane and make mixtapes for your loved ones. All right, enough talking. Let's get started. Start by going into the description of this video and click on the link that says templates. There, it will lead you to my public OneDrive in the folder called Music Packaging. It was previously named CD Music Packaging, but I decided to rename it since I'll be venturing into other formats of music later on. There should be a folder called Templates. Once you're there, click on the folder labeled Cassettes. When you're there, download the file named Cassette Tape Insert and open it using Photoshop. When it opens, it should look something like this. I bet your eyes went straight to the blue lines on the sides. Let me explain this before we start designing the inserts. When you get a blank cassette, the jewel case spine where the tracklist usually is can differ in sizes. These are some of the sizes that I have encountered. Personally, I like the one that is 2.6 centimeters width since it's the only one that can hold the track listing and information about the cassette. But I know that usually the ones available are the ones measuring from 1.6 centimeters width or 1 centimeter width. Depending on your jewel case, using the cropping tool, crop until you're left with the size that you need. Since the jewel case I'm using this time is the full one of 2.6 centimeters width, I'll leave it untouched. Once the side has been resized or left untouched, you can erase the folder called tracklist and you are left with a blank canvas where you can start designing to your liking. The section on the left is the part where usually the tracklist goes. This one in the middle is where the spine goes, where you put the name of the album and the artist. And the one on the left is the cover. To design the inside, just turn the file 180 degrees and you can design but what if you want to make an insert with multiple pages like this one well this is easy to do and you don't need to download more templates you can do it yourself so this section is the cover if you want to add extra pages all you have to do is to take the cropping tool and instead of cropping inwards we're cropping outwards like this. Expand it to wherever you feel like you'll need and click on crop. Once you have expanded, we need to make the next pages precise. The cover measurement is 10.8 centimeters high and 6.5 centimeters width. Each page has to be a millimeter less width wise. For example, the next page has to be 10.8 centimeters high and 6.4 centimeters width. The way I do this is by creating a rectangle with the rectangle tool with set dimensions. I move the guys from the ruler to mark it and then I delete the rectangle and it looks like this. I repeat the same step as previous but this time subtracting 1 millimeter from the 6.4 so it would end up being 6.3 centimeters widthwise and so on until you have the section that you want. With the cropping tool, crop the space you have reminding and you should have this. Now you can start making your designs. Remember to design the inside, just turn your file 180 degrees and you can start designing. One tip I want to give you is that you can use the line to mark the divisions to help you mark the folds once you've printed it. You can use a similar color to the one you're using, but making the lines extremely thin so that at the end it won't be noticeable. Just a guide to mark the folds. Once you have your design finished, save them as a high resolution JPEG. To do the label is really simple. Just go back into the description of this video and click on the link once again. There it will lead you to my OneDrive folder called Music Packaging. Click on the folder called Templates. Once you're there, click on the folder Label Cassettes. Download the file named Cassette Tape Label and open it using Photoshop. Here you can design your labels however you want. I recommend you to keep the layer 1 on top of what you're designing so that you know where things are being placed. If you're using a solid color on the label, just select the Paint Bucket tool to color it wherever color you want. If you're going to use texture background, place a texture on top of layer 1 and arrange it however you like. Crop it to size, move it around, etc, etc. Then press command and move your crosser on top of layer 1. You'll 
notice it will turn like this. The label will generate a selection like so. Select the layer with your texture, then select the marquee tool. Move the cursor on top of the layer with the texture, left click it and select layer via copy. A layer with just the figure will generate. Delete the one that we don't need and continue designing the label as you wish. You can put any elements in your label as you wish, but the thing I mostly see in all cassettes is the title of the album, the name of the artist, and site A or site B for each of the cassettes, but I have also seen ones that they include the track listing for each side. Once you finish, save the file as a high resolution PNG. On my public folder, click on the folder called Paper Size and download the A4 size and open it using Photoshop. Copy and paste your designs and they should place with the correct size in the middle. Arrange them in any way. Both of them can fit in the same page. You also have some space to fit the labels. If you don't want to arrange them this way, you can use Microsoft Word. Flip the page horizontally, add the image one by one. Double click the image, click on wrap text, and then click in front of text. Now that you have it like this, double click the image and resize only the height to 10.8 centimeters. If this box is selected, the width will adapt automatically. This is so to make it easy if your design is very long. Also, if you have many pages of the insert, you can change the paper from A4 to legal. To arrange the labels, import the pictures, double click it, click on wrap text, and then click in front of text. Now to make it the correct size, double click the image and resize it to 4.1 centimeters height and 8.9 centimeters width. And you should repeat this with the other label. Arrange them in a way everything fits in the same page. You'll notice that we're not printing the inserts on both sides of the paper. I'll explain why later. Once they're printed, it should look something like this. You'll notice that I printed two different inserts on the same page. This is because I'm doing two at a time, but I'll just work on one of them on this video. Start by cutting the inserts with an X-Acto knife and a ruler. I like using a clear acrylic ruler to help me see where I'm placing it. Once both sides have been cut, we need to join them together. The reason we did this, instead of printing it on both sides of the paper, is because one, the images sometimes come off center for a few minutes millimeters and the second one is because the paper isn't thick enough and printing it on cardstock is not ideal and the inserts of cassettes are somewhat thick most of the times I use spray adhesive on one of the sides although you can use a glue stick and then I make sure both sides are facing the correct direction and I join them together smoothing as I go and it looks something like this if you have any like pieces of paper hanging out just cut them with your exacto knife now to mark the folds I use the guys I placed before printing and using the ruler and marking tool I mark the folds and then with my fingers I fold them and that's it the answer is done For the labels, all that there's left to do is to cut the straight edges with an X-Acto knife and a ruler. Then using a tiny pair of scissors, I cut the edges. For the inside, I make like sort of X's on the edges and then using the tiny scissors to cut the insides. You can also use your X-Acto knife. To glue them in place, I'm using the spray adhesive but once again, you can use a glue stick. You place it onto the cassette on the correct side, make sure to clean the cassette while you place the label with some rubbing alcohol, and repeat that on the other side, and we're done! And that is it for this video guys, don't forget to come back next week so you'll learn how to make the sleep case version. I hope you like it, if you like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and if you are thank you so much. Don't forget that you can follow me on my social medias at Crafter Training and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!